Question number five. Which of the following is not considered to be a contributing factor to the incumbency effect? So we talked about this originally, but kind of put it all together. Uh, again, uh, Congress is... Um, uh, the incumbency effect is, is much more prominent with House members. Uh, the election rate, let's just say it's roughly 90% the re-election rate, whereas the re-election rate for senators is closer to like 70%. So what is not a contributing factor? So there are definitely are. Name recognition, absolutely. So this is not one of the answers. Name recognition absolutely does help you get re-elected. If you're a congressperson, you constantly have your name in, in the media, you're sending out mailers through your legislative office, and you're simultaneously sending out mailers through your campaign because you raise more money than your opponent, and you're flooding your district uh, with your name out there. So you have an advantage there. Voting record, absolutely. Uh, it is taken uh, into account, and you do have a voting record. Now, it can come and hurt you, but for the most part, you can say you showed leadership. A challenger can only say what he or she will do, and so it becomes difficult to compete against someone that has an established record. Uh, educational background. Uh, you know, this would be one of those things where, you know, maybe you're comfortable uh, putting that as an answer, but uh, it's not necessarily the case. It could be the case where the, the incumbent has more education, but not necessarily. Experience in campaigning. Absolutely. If you're incumbent, uh, most likely you have more experience than your challenger, so it does come into, into play. Now, is it possible that a challenger used to be incumbent and uh, has more experience than the incumbent? It is possible, but very unlikely. Uh, one case, actually, uh, Ron Paul, uh, aside from running for president, uh, he was a medical doctor, and uh, what's kind of very unique in his situation, he was a House member in Texas. He won... Um, the House of Representatives seats three separate times as a non-incumbent. And I think that's pretty impressive uh, a political uh, a feat. So he originally ran, obviously any congressperson originally ran as a non-incumbent. He resigned from the Senate two separate times, one time to quit the party, uh, to run the president, one time just to actually just uh, return to private practice. And when he returned, he was a non-incumbent and he won partly because he had a lot of name recognition. And unique to Ron Paul, he actually personally, as an obstetrician, delivered his own constituents. Can you imagine that? Uh, can you vote for me? I delivered you. I mean, that would be a pretty impressive uh, uh, thing that you could say in a campaign that's very unique uh, to Ron Paul. In fact, he actually did deliver about 4,000 of his constituents. So again, experience in campaigning absolutely helps because that helps you, um, you know, with a lot of different areas. Uh, visibility constituents. You're always out there. Uh, you're meeting and greeting and you're, you're, you're awarding medals and you're recognizing people. So people form a positive impression of you as congressman. And again, as, um, you know, one of the things that's consistent is that people are upset at Congress as a whole. They, they think Congress is inefficient. They hate Congress. Approval rating is 9%. Um, maybe if they're lucky, 13%. If they ask you, do you approve of your congressman? Then you see something closer to like 60, 70, maybe even 80%, right? And the reality is because if you're visible, uh, it's, it's one thing to not vote for an incumbent um, because you never see that person. But if that person helps your daughter get into West Point, you may not agree with that person's political views, but you as sure as heck going to vote for that person. Um, so... Based on this elimination, there's nothing inherent about a, an incumbent having a, you know, maybe a better educational background. In fact, uh, the example I gave in the previous lecture, uh, Jay Chen versus Ed Royce. You know, Ed Royce was a college graduate, um, and he owned his business, uh, Cal State Fullerton. He, he graduated, so he did have a, a college background. And if you look at uh, Jay Chen, the challenger, he was actually a Harvard graduate, and so you can argue that you know, he had the advantage in the educational background. But again, people don't necessarily vote that. Um, sometimes it can actually hurt you if you, have, uh, if you have a Harvard degree. People might consider you to be a little bit too elitist. So it's not necessarily going to be something that is a contributing factor, at least uh, to the incumbency effect. De definitely good to have on your resume. It doesn't necessarily hurt. But again, it um, uh, could be more of a neutral characteristic. Thank you for watching educator.com.